Are you talking about a good cup of coffee? What? I mean, this is good. This is really good. Captain Dino, is this good coffee? I want to thank Captain Dino all the way from Michigan. And look at this. Isn't that beautiful? That is on canvas, painting by Tiffany. This is called Rachel's Heart. And this is Rachel weeping in the road, crying for her children. She can be heard crying for her children. You can read this in Jeremiah, how that uh, Rachel is heart is broken. She does end up dying in childbirth, delivering the last son of Jacob, which is Benjamin. And her tomb is still there. And day and night, women come to her tomb and pray and cry and wail. Her, and even King Herod, when at the time that he was slaughtering the babies, trying to kill Jesus, it said in Ramah, Rachel was heard crying for her children, praying for her children. So, Tiffany Haskell, Painted this. This is also a painting in my book, The Hosea Prophecy. Um, so it's in this book, uh, The Hosea Prophecy. It's one of the uh, paintings that are in the book during the illustration by Tiffany Haskell of Austin, Texas. Beautiful. And she sent this to my wife to put up on the wall. And uh, so we're going to have it behind us on our set in uh, Jesus' name. Folks, there's some serious thing going on right now in Egypt and it's biblical prophecy from Isaiah chapter 19 so I want you to look at it if you will with me just for a moment get your Bible ready get your coffee are you serious what you got to have coffee preferably Bible right here let me go to the to the um the article, Egyptian security forces have fought opponents of army rule in Cairo. For the fourth day now, this being Monday, December the 19th, 2011, and the United States are worried by the violence. They've urged the generals to respect the human rights. Medical sources said that the death toll has now risen to 13 since Friday when clashes have erupted and hundreds have been wounded. Now, Police and soldiers using batons and tear gas have drove the stone-throwing protesters out of Cairo's Tayera Square, the hub of the uprising that ousted Jose Mubarak back in February. Hundreds had returned to the square by morning after security forces retreated behind barricades in the streets leading to the parliament, the cabinet office, and the interior ministry. Egypt's fragile government, which is made up, folks, of five military generals that call themselves the governing council, are trying to hang on to power as the people are desperately wanting a change. They got rid of Hosni Mubarak because he, uh, because they had no lacks of, no ability to have free enterprise, no capitalism correctly. There's some, but they needed a change, and it's more than just that. His 32-year reign had locked it down to two classes of people, and the folks just needed something to change. And they took measures in their own hands. During the midst of this Arab Spring, which is really biblical prophecy found in Daniel chapter 11, 41 through 45, that says the Antichrist spirit will move into the glorious land, into the Middle East, and many nations will be overthrown, including Egypt, Libya, and he'll stand at the steps of Ethiopia. What's happened? Ivory Coast changed hands. Tunisia got rid of Ben Ali, overthrew him. Jose Mubarak went down in Egypt as, as prophesied. Muammar Gaddafi went down in Libya as prophesied. And right now, Syria's Assad and Yemen's Ali Alabalalala Saleh. And Saleh is gone. They just want to bring him back and try him in Yemen. And there's protesting going on in Bahrain, in Algeria. And Jordan has now sided with NATO to allow NATO troops to stand on the border between, uh, in Jordan, on the border of Syria. U.S. soldiers are foot boots on the ground. It has still not been reported by the, ma by the mass media, the national media. Not even the Huffington Post hasn't wrote anything about it. But they wrote about me. 
They've wrote about me, but they can't write about what's really going on. And I want to ask George Erwick one question. Are you going to call the late Kim Jong-il a terrorist? Will you at least utter it from the lips of clay that you have? Will you ever call <laughs> Medulajad a terrorist when he's on record seven times prophesying the destruction of Jerusalem? Will you ever, ever write an article as it relates to the real terrorism of radical Islamic jihadists who run around the world blowing themselves up with suicide vests, killing scores and dozens of people in the streets? But no, you write an article titled, and I quote, Jesus, Johnny Depp, and the Christian terrorist. And the article is not about the lyrics of the song of the group Baby Bird, but instead, they're not about the fact that Johnny Depp played guitar in the song. No! You said, I don't want to talk about the lyrics. I, don't, I want to analyze the Christian mentality. I'm still looking for your article today on Kim Jong-il. I'm still listening and watching for you to write an article on radical jihadists. I don't hear from you. But God has. And let me just say this. And I'll go back to Egypt, but I'm just getting a word. This was sent to me this morning. And I'm going to go to read it. Jeremiah, chapter 17. Oh, it's a powerful scripture. For those who write, those who become negative, those who come against the gospel. The Bible says... In Jeremiah 17, O Lord, the hope of Israel, all that forsake thee, shall be ashamed. And they that depart from me shall be written in the earth, because they have forsaken the Lord, the fountain of living waters. Now when the woman was accused in John 8, when the woman was accused of adultery, and they drug her by the hair of the head and threw her at the feet of Jesus, the scribes and Pharisees, the rulers of the law, and they said to Jesus, Jesus, in Moses' law, she should be stoned. What sayest thou? And Jesus stooped down on the ground as if he didn't hear them and began to write with his finger on the earth. Was he writing the fact that they know, instead of their names being written in the Lamb's book of life, it was written on an earth, an earth that's cursed, an earth that will eventually be destroyed, an earth that will melt with fervent heat? Be very careful. Be very careful what you write and what you say against the gospel of Jesus Christ. Be very careful. You might not like the message, but you better not attack the messenger either. I say that with love and I say that with compassion. I say that with forgiveness, but I'm telling you, be very, very careful. Now, back to Egypt. So hundreds have... So look, in, in uh, the 19th chapter of Isaiah here, it was prophesied that the council would take over. And you can read it. It's Isaiah 19, verses 1, 2, 3, and 4. It is prophesied. And what's happening now? It says, but the it says that the government will be overthrown. Idols will be stolen at a King Tut's museum. They'll be moved at the presence of God. And it says that a, that a council will rule Egypt. But that council will also be destroyed. And you're beginning to see the beginnings of that prophecy in Isaiah 19, 1, 2, 3, and 4. It's happening, folks. It's unbelievable. It's going right down the line. The council, the military governing council of Egypt, the five generals will be destroyed. They'll either resign, assassinated, but they will be removed from power. They'll flee something. It's beginning. Now, that's why their military is fighting back to the people. It will go down. The Muslim Brotherhood is already claiming that they've won 40%, or, yeah, 40 or more, and I think it's more than that, or 60%, somewhere in there, they've got a very large block of seats in the new parliament coming. So the Muslim Brotherhood is going to raise up a leader. He will be a fierce king and a cruel lord, according to Isaiah 19, 1 through 4. Folks, Bible prophecy is happening daily. Are you saved? Have you given your life to Jesus Christ? I'm telling you, we're living in the days prophesied by Jesus, the prophets of old. You must be born again. If you would like to become a Christian, let me help you. Send me a personal message right here on YouTube. I want to be saved. I want to be saved. I want to be saved. 